Hey guys, long time no see. Um, this is a different setup for my magazine streams than usual. I'm using a webcam on a little thingy, a little, uh, what's the word? Not, it's not a tripod, but it's like a little squiggly arm that you can move. But it sucks because it makes the image like, uh, not full screen. And it's not super in focus but I thought maybe it'd be better than the old way because that way sometimes that wouldn't always be in focus at the bottom of the thing. So I don't know. Nintendo Power, volume 32, featuring Darkwing Duck, Let's Get Dangerous. Not, and they have Contra 3 Super Review, but they're not even advertising anything else. Usually there's a few more headlines on the front. They're like, you know what? We don't even need it. We can just have Darkwing Duck and it will sell. And I'm sure it did sell. <laughs> So here we go. Get more power. So of course it opens with the ad to subscribe and that you get a free player's guide for Super Nintendo, the Game Atlas, Mario Mania, or a Game Boy one. Did any of you guys have these? I never had any of these growing up. I see uh, the Game Atlas one. I feel like I see that at conventions a lot. Do you want to triple your power? Yes. See, it's not super in focus. I'm sorry, guys. This is like a, this is like a trial run with a different setup. So please bear with me. <laughs> this issue is May 92. We'd be listening to Criss Cross Jump on the Top 40 radio. <laughs> All right, so we're time traveling back to 1992. I was in preschool, I think, yeah, preschool. <laughs> hey, Shinobi Soup. Oh, there's, there we go. That's the music I need to get me in the groove. Oh, look at this ad. Punish your father when he gets home. So your Game Boy's missing again? Who knows where you'll find it? On his workbench in the garage? Under his recliner in the den? In his briefcase on its way home? You've given him his chances, but now it's time for him to get his own Game Boy. He's lucky that it's also time for Father's Day. It's time to lay down the law. Yeah, get out of my room, Dad. It's my Game Boy. Ugh. <laughs> See, this is like before the video game ads got like really edgy, and but they're still kind of like you know trying to appeal to like teens. It's good. It's good times. Stuff was so innocent back then. Alright, so for NES, they got some Darkwing Duck action. Wacky Races. I've been meaning to stream Wacky Races. Wacky Races is crazy to me because you would expect it to be a racing game. But it's not. It's a side-scroller and you're Muttley. It's bizarre. <laughs> and Robocop 3. Oh! Batman on Game Boy. Some Return of the Joker action. That game, I used to think I liked it. Oh, wait, 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 that's Return of the Joker. I thought it was just normal Batman on Game Boy. I was gonna say, if it was normal Batman on Game Boy, I used to think I liked it. And then, like, I did a video on it, like, way back. Way back in the day. And then, like, every time I would go back to it, I, like, would be like, I don't think I like it. I don't think I like it, but I like that he's all smushed and small. It's cute. Thank you, Yude Costa. Good to see you here. Do they still do ads like that now? Um, I don't know. Because I don't, I mean, I haven't, like, looked at a magazine in a long time, so I can't answer that question. Probably not. I feel like ads aren't really edgy anymore. Like, when it comes to things like this, I feel like those days are gone. When I say edgy, I mean like just goofy, weird. I, well, you know what? Some of the Game Boy Pocket era ads were a little risque. Like very sexual and kind of like, oh. So, I don't know. <laughs> and then for Super NES, we have Zardion. Okay, that one I'm not familiar with. Super Adventure Island, Contra 3, and Super, so <laughs> Super Soccer Showdown. Alright, so, whoa, I was gonna say already. 
Okay, so here are some uh, letters to the editor. I'm not going to read these because I don't think my voice will hold up. But, yeah. Sorry, guys that wrote in in 1992. Skipping over you. Alright, so Darkwing Duck. Let's see. So this is for the NES game. Let's get dangerous. This game is very Mega Man-like, in my opinion. I've never been able to get really far in it. That being said, it's been years since I've tried. Uh, it's not an easy game. And there's also the one on Game Boy. That one... I'm sure I've tried it before, but I don't remember any of it. That skater die music caught me off guard. Guard, sorry. <laughs> that was funny. Does it sound like shit through the speakers? It already kind of sounds like shit through the here, so I can't imagine what it sounds like for you guys. It sounds fine, did it? I don't think that sounded fine. <laughs> that made me laugh. Uh, and then somebody asked, I didn't see, it went away, but somebody asked, do they still make gaming magazines? I'm not totally sure, but they make, there's this one magazine called Retro Gamer, and they release it like every few months, but it's like an independent published, published thing, I think. So, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they have ads in it, really. I don't know. I've, I've bought it here and there, but it's been a long time. Thank you, Retro K, for subscribing to Tier 1 for 31 whole months. Thank you. I hope your day is good, too. Shit music for a shit game. I don't want to piss off the Skate or Die fans. We know what happened last time. People were very upset. All right. So, yeah. This is just talking about giving you... A a sneak peek at Darkwing Duck on the NES. And it, well, it's not really a sneak peek. I mean, it, it is if you don't have the game yet. But you know, it's like a little guide, which is good. Cause like I said, I personally think this game's pretty tough. But a lot of the uh, Disney Capcom games are not easy. Even the, like into the Super Nintendo ones, especially. Don't get me started on Lion King on Super Nintendo. Now I heard that the Genesis version's better haven't tried it. I'm still scarred from the Super Nintendo version. Alright, so next up we have Wacky Races. So like I was saying, this is not a racing game. It's a platformer and you play as Muttley and I think if I remember correctly, you bark at people. Do you throw bones? By grabbing bones, you can select helpful attack items and other useful power-ups for Muttley. When Muttley collects a grand total of a hundred diamonds, he will receive well-deserved one, one up. Okay, so here's the attacks right in front of my face. You can bite, use a bomb, sonic bark. That's what I was thinking of. Isn't that badass? It's like a, isn't that the Godzilla thing? Like sonic breath or something? I don't know, but sonic bark is what Muttley has. And then you have wings? Okay, I've never gotten the wings before, so that's interesting. I've, I barely played it, but I should stream that. <laughs> this is on NES. Thank you so much, XXV, for subscribing for 22 months. Thank you. Congratulations for knowing me this long. It's, that's a long time. Thank you. Oh, you just subbed to me on YouTube? Thank you. Dreer, D Rear Batman 1977. Thank you. A reboot of Darkwing Duck is in development for Disney Plus? Of course it is. Everything has to get a reboot. I don't know, but who knows? Maybe it'll be okay. Splish Splash <laughs> America. Go, go, America. Okay, so from what I've seen, you, there's no car driving. I'm surprised. I like that though. See, they they were like, no, they're gonna expect racing, but we're not gonna give them racing unless this is like a um a uh you know how they like skin games to make it like um uh like fit a franchise. Like for example, we're back that dinosaur movie. The Game Boy game is just a reskin of 
I forget the name of it, but another dinosaur game. And they just slapped We're Back on the front and they like put like a title screen, but everything else is the same. I don't think that's the case though with this. Are you trolling XXV? He says, did you know the SMB2 is a reskin? <laughs> Do you mean Doki Doki Panic? <laughs> if you were serious, I'm sorry. But yes. Anyway. So that's Wacky Races. Oh, wait, oh, I thought this was a different design. I was gonna say it like that, but it's just stars. But you know what? That's cool. It's fun. Dookie Panic? That's that's something else. You were trolling. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> okay, here's Robocop 3. Ugh. These games are... Um, there's something. <laughs> there's something. Just Aaron, just assume that everyone is always trolling, says New Wave Junkie. See, I do that. I get in that mindset. And then I come across someone that was like, oh no, I was asking that seriously, and then I feel bad. <laughs> so it's like, I can't, I can't win. You like the first Robocop game for NES? That's cool. Especially from the usual crew. Yeah, see, the usuals, like, most of you guys, I know who's trolling and who's not, but every once in a while, see, XXV, you've been around a long time, but that threw me off. I wasn't sure. <laughs> Thrillist Surfari. So this is classified information. So this is a sequel to TNT Surf Design. T... TNC. I said TNT. That was a television channel. TNC Surf Design, right? That sounds wrong, but I think it's right. And I used to think, wait, or wait. No, this is the second one, right? Yeah, it is, I think. Anyway, so they're telling you how to find a secret warp. And you guys can't see this because it's not in focus, and I'm sorry. Oh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, a password placement. When the title screen appears, press a eight times and B eight times. You'll be invited to enter a keyword describing one of the game's locations. The password boar, for example, stands for the cave of the boar. By using this password, you can skip to the area in that game that it describes. So, I don't know, for some reason, the phrase password placement threw me off. Like, why don't you just say, here's a password? They're making it sound like more than it is. TLC. <laughs> TLC surf design. <laughs> and then for Maniac Mansion, rock the house. It says, search for the keypad near the left of the wall in this hallway. Choose to use the keypad four times for an awesome explosion. Every time, this is going to be a unpopular opinion, but I've never been able to get into Maniac Mansion. Maybe I should give it a try again. It's been a while. Was there an Aladdin deck enhanced Robin Hood? Uh, that, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure actually about that one. Super Robin Hood, yes, that was the name of it. Thank you. And then there's one for golf, just straight up ultra golf. Some shit you can do with the golf on Game Boy. I, does anybody care? I don't think so. Anyway, Super Mario World Castle Comeback. Position Mario over a conquered castle and press L and R simultaneously. Simultaneously. I can never say that word correctly. Anyway. You'll work your way through the rubble and re-enter the castle course. I think we all knew that one, but back then, you know, maybe not. Off-road, in the money. I think a track from Off-road played a few minutes ago. Anyway, um, Off-road, I am hor horrible at controlling that game. 
Start a two-player game and control just one of the trucks. You'll be sure to finish in one of the top three positions. Press start on controller two to continue controller two's game. Buy truck improvements and move on to the next race. Huh. Hmm. I feel like you probably want to like Maniac Mansion, but I'm all for you giving it a try. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably right, Hex. Oh, we got some more classified information. Mystical Ninja. People bring this game up to me a lot. Is it, wait, is it what I'm thinking of? I think so. I haven't played it in a few years, but when I did, I was like, eh, I don't know if this is for me. But I, I know a lot of people like it, so I'd be down to give it another shot. Uh, some s codes for Sim, Sim City, Hole in One, Adam's Family, oof. Alright, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Chapter 5. So, these are the mini comics um, in each issue. They're doing some Zelda. We didn't read, see now we're going to be in the middle of this the story so I don't know if I should read it because we won't know what's going on I always like the um, sounds they put in like ka-ching whoosh whoosh Link looks like he's wearing burlap sacks for shoes in that picture I mean it it he does it'd be appropriate this is from 92 And then Kaba 86 Klino Reverie series is on the next gen or current console. It's basically a remaster of the first and second game. Okay, that's what I thought. But yeah, so if I do a full playthrough of Klonoa, I'll probably just do it on PlayStation, like the original game. But if I'm feeling lazy, I might just get it on Switch. <laughs> we'll, we'll cross that bridge when the time comes. And my foot fell asleep. I'm like, my table is a little high up, and I was sitting on my foot, and now it's asleep. And it was very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, these comics are cool. Oh, that's true. I guess Princess Tomato does count as a point and click. I was enjoying that, which shocked me. I thought I would hate it. Like, I thought I would appreciate it because of the concept of, like, vegetables running around. I think that's adorable. But I actually was enjoying it. But it got hard. And we got stuck. It got weird. I think we got stuck. No, no, no. We made it out of the bathroom. And then we got stuck in prison. And I think we were getting, uh, there was a flood or we were going to drown. Something crazy that I was not anticipating happening in Princess Tomato Happened. So maybe one day we'll try it again. I don't know. Probably not. I think it's just, it's gone. So yeah, nor sometimes I read these, but since we're in the middle of a story with this one, it's like, I don't, I don't know. I made the decision not to. So we're just going to keep going. You can look at the artwork though. <laughs> Kickmaster. All right. So this is Batman Return of the Joker. So Return of the Joker on NES, I've tried multiple times to get into and I can't. I feel like I'm saying that a lot lately. It's just, it's ha it's happening tonight, I guess. Um, I don't know. Because I love the first Batman NES game. That's one of my favorite games of all time. But I can never get into Return of the Joker. Do any of you guys like it? I'm sure somebody likes it. It's Princess Tomato a good game? I think it's pretty good. I like it. I mean, I know it's like people know about it because it's like one of the rarest NES games or whatever. Or it's really expensive, I should say. I don't know how rare it is, but I know it's really expensive. Um, but I like it. I think it's like an original, quirky, fun, like, little adventure. So I recommend it. Return of the Joker looks good but doesn't play good. That's a good way to, um describe it Nintendo fan because like I really wanted to like it but I just I couldn't I don't know I was just expecting a follow-up I think to the first Batman game so and hello Metal Reaper I'm not playing any games tonight no unfortunately 
It's cool because it pushes the hardware so much, but the first one has more charm. Okay. Very unfair gameplay. Music's fantastic. The grappling hook in, Re in Return of the Joker is complete ass. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I've tried it, and, like, I just couldn't get into it. Um... I'm sure on a, like, variety stream or something I've tried out the Game Boy version, but I'm not- it's not ringing a bell. I'm sure this isn't great either. Batman is back on the job. Does he ever quit, though? The Super Nintendo version of Return of the Joker looks like shit. Oh, was that only a prototype? Could be Batman forever. I mean, that's true. Yeah, so basically, you know what, this kind of... You know what, he, he looks more like Batman compared to the, the first Batman Game Boy game where he looks all cute and smushed. This one looks more like, uh, like how you would expect him to look, but I don't know if the gameplay is any fun. The first Batman game reminds you of Super Mario Land. Oh, that's a good uh, comparison. I could see that. It does kind of... They're both smushed little, little dudes. <laughs> Alright, so, I mean... Whoa, this is a lot. I mean, that's good, because I'm sure you would need this guy to get, to get anywhere. Maybe not, but... Alright. Fun pack four and one. What the hell's this? Gaming on the go. Playing board games on the road can be a mess, even with magnetic pieces. You never know when the driver will swerve to miss a bunny, or the plane will encounter turbulence, scattering even the strongest magnets to the floor. Four in one fun pack from Interplay available later in the summer will let you play four classic board games on the go so i'm guessing this is for game boy yeah it's for game boy so they're really like going oh play you know you can use the interlink i never had the interlink or what was it called what was it the interlink no just game link i said interlink because i read the word interplay it's one it's one of those nights but um <laughs> So you could get, so with this package you get Sargon, the premier chess program, Backgammon, Reversi, what? Checkers, and then, oh, these are the games in progress. So the key to reversi is to control the edges and corners of the board, avoid playing in the four spaces and the corners of the board until necessary. Alright, so it's just, I'm surprised it has this big of a spread for this game. Have I played Pest Terminator? The image is frozen. Shit. There we go. The goal, unplug it and plug it back in. That's what it worked. <sighs> this music is from Matchbox Motor City Patrol. Hello, Nuff Dragon. All right, all fixed. So yeah, this is basically a really long spread on 4-in-1 for board games, for Game Boy. Like, this is shocking. I don't know, maybe back then it wasn't shocking that this happened, but like, they paid for this. They must have really wanted to sell this. <laughs> Thank you so much, BauerFan212, for subscribing for 25 whole months. He says great content. Thank you. <laughs> I like that timing. That was Matchbox 20's original name. What was it? Just Matchbox? Or was it Interplay 4 and 1? I don't think any of those games ever came out for Game Boy. See, it was called. What was this actually called? 
It was just called Fun Pack 4 in 1. Like, look at this logo. You know how much of a bummer it would be to receive that for, like, a gift from your parents? Ma oh, Matchbox Motor City Patrol. Was that really Matchbox 20's first name? Or are you trolling? I don't know. See, it's been too long since I streamed. I don't... I'm not on top of my game. <laughs> I don't think it ever came out. It might not have ever came out. I mean, who knows? I like the artwork they did for this, though. Look at that. It's fun. Like, look at this artwork. It's so, like, I mean, they had to do something to make Batgammon look interesting. Oh my god, the Game Boy has arms! The Game Boys have arms! Look at this picture! They look like they're attacking this guy, and he's trying to fight them off with an umbrella. Can I bring this closer? There we go. And she's like ducking because she's like, oh my god, wait, is he picking her up? I think he's picking that other person up. These Game Boys are pissed. This is what's gonna happen when AI takes over. They're just gonna like, take, like, kill us all. This is crazy. I mean, at least they got really creative. Because, like, what are you gonna do for a four in one bullshit? game you gotta you gotta do something kudos to this artist good job that was very entertaining see who to know i love that well backgammon looks fun says link to fire <laughs> they're becoming game boy terminators yes that's a really good image you know what i'm gonna um bookmark it because i want to take a picture of it later for like twitter or something It made me laugh. Evil Game Boy is the final boss in Bagminton. <laughs> 3D print giant Game Boy bodies for themselves. If I had a 3 3D printer, it'd be dangerous because I just print a whole bunch of stupid shit. Work Boy. Ooh, this is fun. This is a good issue. We're getting some weird shit. I, hold on. I need a lozenge. All right. Thank you. Work boy. So for today's lozenge, I have Hall's Breezers. Um soothes every soothes soothe soothes everyday throat irritation which i have right now um so it says creamy strawberry flavor and you know what this reminded me of i bought this because i was like holy shit is this gonna taste like cream savers do you guys remember that i think i heard that you can buy them now but only at dollar tree i haven't looked for them but allegedly they're back but those things were so good like insanely good for a hard candy but anyway these taste like that mixed with menthol. <laughs> and it's pretty good. Thank you, uh, Hypnocrown, for stopping by. Have a good night. Hello, Elraz. Everyone's talking about cream savers now. But yeah, so if any of you guys go to Dollar Tree, let me know if you see them. I don't know if they're still there, but like a while ago, someone was like, oh yeah, they sell them at Dollar Tree now. Anyway, so hopefully this isn't too distracting, but whoever said the Game Boy doesn't have a practical side, never use the Work Boy from Fabtech. F-A-B-T-E-K. Fabtech is not, not ringing a bell. I wonder if they put anything else out. I've never heard of Workboy, 
I feel like this might be another case of it never came out. Because I know there's like the Bible and I think there's a sewing machine thing. Oh, there was a whole YouTube documentary on it. Okay, there we go. So this wasn't out yet. But it's cool that we have this to look at at what could have been. This would have been awesome. I wish this would focus. Okay, how early 90s is that like clip art? I mean, it's not clip art, but illustration. <laughs> like that is just very of the time. Anyway, <laughs> so you could get a local clock Workboy keeps track of the time, showing a traditional clock and the date. Daybook, keep track of all of your important appointments using daybook function. Temperature, convert Fahrenheit temperatures into Celsius. Uh, control menu, clear stored records or change your home city in the control menu. Calendar, look ahead or back in time. What are you doing Friday the 13th, January 1995? Records. Workbook's battery backed up database will keep important facts and figures close at hand. Store addresses, notes, figures, and facts. Or your best Metroid 2 tip. See, this was before PDAs. Remember those? I never had one, but thank you so much, um, Walker Techless Dangler for gifting a sub to Jordyvin. Thank you, Walker. I appreciate that. I'll definitely look up that documentary. Thanks for letting me know, Kaplan. Um, yeah, this is really cool. Oh, I think I've seen an image of this before, like, um... Like this keyboard. So that was small. That's insane. That's really cool. Ryan Silva says, I got a PDA as a gift. I also own a Ouya, so <laughs> that rules. Um, but yeah, so you can keep records, measures, let's see. Since the rest of the world deals with metric me measurements, it's good to know that they, that they're talking, oh, good to know what they're talking about. Convert linear liquid and weight measures. Okay. Accounts, travel. I like all the icons. This feature is great for globe trotting. <laughs> Calculator and a phone. Wait, what? It can auto dial from a list of telephone numbers in the address book database. Hold the mouthpiece of the phone to the Game Boy speaker, then auto dial. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. I don't think I totally understand that. But that's crazy. And also I just need to point out, so I really appreciate whoever designed this layout. This, so people are always like, oh, 80s, early 90s, everything's neon. This shade of magenta and this shade of teal, there's also like an emerald green, which is kind of like this one, but it's kind of hard to see on camera. For like offices, like office decor and stuff, it was always this color scheme. And this is like, um, like this isn't flat gray blue, it's like, um, is it faux finishing? Is that the term for it? It's like, this is very, uh, like, this is the wallpaper you would see at a dentist office. I appreciate this. I even appreciate this little guy here. 
This looks like an illustration you would have seen back in the day in an article in like Time Magazine or something. Good job. <laughs> I'm really into this. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna mark this one too. This is really cool. And don't worry, these are sticky notes so they won't damage the pages. Is that Doug? It kind of looks like Doug. <laughs> Would you use the Game Boy sewing machine? No, I can't sew. I tried learning when I, in high school, but I think I was just too impatient and I didn't last very long <laughs> trying to learn. Cause I wanted to, quick side note. So younger kids may not remember this, but there was a time in like 2005, 2004, Wear skinny jeans, you couldn't just go and buy them. You had to like, uh, like flares were really popular in bootcut jeans, and you had to like cut them and then make them like skinny yourself. <laughs> so, yeah, so all the like scene and emo kids back then, that's what we do. <laughs> Thank you! Dan Evil Robot for subscribing for 22 months. Thank you so much. Anyway. Oh! It's the Nintendo Power Awards 1991. I didn't know that was in here. Okay. The Nesters 1991. And that's Nestor. If you don't know. There he is. So we're going to go through what one for various um, categories. Okay, so for graphics and sound, the winner is on the NES, Battletoads. A big victory for the Toads, Rash, Pimple, and Zitz garnered over twice as many votes as second place finisher received. Well-defined characters and background surely appealed to those casting votes. So second place was Ninja Gaiden 3, Third place was Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Okay, that surprises me. I wasn't like playing games yet back in 91, but I was too little, but um, all right. I wouldn't guess that. I like Ninja Gaiden 3 a lot. I would, I don't like Battletoads that much. I like Ninja Gaiden 3 though. I mean, that's cool. So for Game Boy, the winner is Metroid 2. Samus and her first Game Boy Adventure dominated the voting in this category in much the same way as Battletoads dominated in the NES category. This is quite an impressive win for Samus considering the competition. Second place was Mega Man and Dr. Wily's Revenge. Okay. Third place was Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge. Two of the very best Game Boy Adventure games round out the top three in the graphics and sound category. I don't know, maybe one day I'll go back to Belmont's Revenge. I liked it the most out of the Game Boy Castlevania games. I'm surprised it was third place. I feel like that could have been second. Like, I understand why Metroid 2 won, because it's Metroid, but I, I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, music in Belmont's Revenge is insane for the Game Boy. It's really good. I just got tired. I felt like we were just constantly climbing ropes and I was like, I can't take it anymore. Oh, thank you, Re Re uh, Winter Burden. I will, thank you. I think I need another Hall Breezers. Can I be sponsored? If I'm sponsored by anything, I should probably be sponsored by, like, Benadryl and Diet Coke, honestly. <laughs> Just being honest. Metroid 2 is really good sprite work for Game Boy. See, I haven't played that one. Like, I I've seen videos of it, and I've seen gameplay of it, and it looks good. How about Coke Zero? I like Coke Zero okay. Um, I like it, but Diet Coke has my heart. <laughs> And I know it's bad for you, I don't drink it all the time, I don't drink it every day, but I love Diet Coke. <laughs> How about Pepsi? 
You know what? I used to hate Pepsi, and then something happened in the last year. Where, like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I, I don't hate Pepsi anymore. Everything is bad for you. That's right. Just do it in moderation. Be careful. Be nice and empathetic to your fellow human beings and animals. And that's all you can do. <laughs> um, okay. So, for graphics and sounds... It's a little more, um, what's, it's, eh, I was gonna say it's a little more focused, but not, I'm sorry. So, for best graphics, it sounds on the Super Nintendo, Super Mario World. Mario received tough competition from other great Super NES games, but this game just cannot be denied. It's immediately apparent that a lot of time and effort went into making this game look and sound great. Second place, Castlevania 4. Third place, Final Fantasy 2. These two games, both with great graphics quality, fought it out for second and third place. The edge went to Simon. I mean, Castlevania 4 is a beautiful looking game. I don't know, that's tough. Like, I understand why Mario won, but it's like, those are both really nice looking games. Alright, for theme and fun. On NES, for theme and fun, for fun Battletoads one. I would not, whatever. It's not for me and that's okay. Second place is Star Tropics. And third place, okay, this is kind of surprising to me. Adventures of Lolo 3. Okay. I have a feeling that Battletoads- well, I was gonna say I have a feeling that Battletoads just won every category, it was, <laughs> but it could have been nominated for, but I guess it's not the case. But anyway, for Game Boy, the winner is Mega Man and Dr. Wily's Revenge. Everyone seems to love Mega Man. The novelty of being able to use so many different weapons and items makes every Mega Man game a sure winner. This game, Mega Man's first Game Boy Quest, is in no way different. Second place, Final Fantasy Adventure. Third place, Operation C. I like Operation C. Making the world a better place to live seems to be the common theme with second and third place finishers. And for Super Nintendo, I, I had a feeling this would be the winner. So for theme and fun, the winner is Super Mario World. I agree. That's like a really fun game. Um, it says we're not biased, but there was hardly cause to count the votes in this category. As we all know, the Super Mario theme is tried and true, but it's hard to imagine any game getting higher marks in this fun category. Second place, Final Fantasy II. Third place, SimCity. For best challenge, oh, Ninja Gaiden 3 won on NES. That's cool. I agree. That's like a good, it's hard, but fun, in my opinion. It's like really fucking hard, but it's like it's still enjoyable to play. It's not just like, it's not like it hates you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It says the game, the game playing public knows a challenging game when they see one. Some may consider this to be an upset victory, but those people will be the ones who have never played the third game in the Ninja Gaiden series. Second place went to The Simpsons, Bart vs. The Space Mutants. Third place went to Battletoads. Bart Simpsons' first NES game edges out the Battletoads for second place. The Toads will have to settle for third. On Game Boy Best Challenge, Metroid 2 won. Kind of makes sense. Um, with a wide variety of enemies, weapons, terrain, and game endings in Metroid 2, Game Boy aficionados have given a definitive nod to Samus Aran in the challenge department. How fast can you finish the game? Second place, Final Fantasy Legend 2, and third place, Dr. Wily's Revenge. Best challenge. Okay, this makes sense. In Super Nintendo, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. 
Um, yes. Yes, that is Mike. Hello, RJ. Samus Aaron. <laughs> the winner is... Okay, so for Super Ghouls and Ghosts, it says, yes! Exclamation point. A well-deserved win! This is a truly challenging game. Arthur must complete his quest not once, but twice! Super Ghouls and Ghosts features some of the most challenging enemies we've ever seen in a video game. I agree. The game's hard. Second place, SimCity. Third place, Pilot Wings. I agree with Pilot Wings. I cannot control Pilot Wings if my life depended on it. I can't do it. I can't play it. We need a chat command, Mike. I know. So if anybody doesn't know, Mike also streams. He's streaming right now. And sometimes he gets a little vocal, and that's what's going on. So welcome to Aaron Plays. It's House of Madness. Thank you, Vance Velez, for subscribing. For 21 whole months, he says, Just beat Castlevania the Adventure on the Game Boy, so I'm treating myself in the best way by resubbing to Aaron Belmont, of course. Oh, thank you so much. And congratulations for beating Castlevania Adventure on Game Boy. I was not able to get through that game because it pissed me off so much. So that takes a... Uh, True dedication, so congratulations, and thank you again for subscribing to me. But yeah. Fuck pilot wings. I mean... I know it's- I, I think... I really like the music. I like how it looks. I think it's a good game. I just- I can't do it. I can't. I can't control it. I can't get a hang of it. The N64 one, I don't really have a opinion on because I don't think I've tried it that much. But the vibe of the Super Nintendo one, if that makes sense, it's like really good. I just, I don't know, I really like it. Like it should be relaxing, but it's not. It's like, it's so, for me, it's like the calming music and the atmosphere. It should be a really chill game. Not for me. For me, it makes me super, super stressed. What are you eating? I'm eating cough drops because my voice keeps going out. So I'm getting over being sick. <clears throat> so I apologize for the blurred camera. Fucked up voice. It's just, it is what it is. But I just wanted to stream because it's been so long. <laughs> Thank you, Yoshi, for the host. Jordy Vin says the N64 one was way better. Loved that game. The Super Nintendo one was a technical showpiece, basically. Yes, a lot of people say that, and I do get it. It, it, yeah. Yeah, but I also think it's like, it's a cool idea. I don't know. I'll have to play the N64 one more and see if I can like, uh, play it without freaking out. <laughs> You're suspicious Mike and Elmo are never in the same room. I don't know. I guess I guess it's just a coincidence. Thank you, Hex. This stream is a mess. Yes. I wish I could fit that in an emote. You know, like a text emote. I at least could have the word mess. I don't know. Anyway, sorry, I went off on a tangent. For, okay, so for best play control for the NES is Battletoads. Second place, Metal Storm. So Metal Storm is a game I like, but it pissed me off so bad in the end. I, it's been like two years and I still haven't been able to go through it. I'm like traumatized <laughs> from that very last stage. I was so close and I couldn't do it. But, uh, it does control well. It has good controls with the flipping up and down. They do it well. So, that's cool. I'm just shocked to see Metal Storm 
getting that recognition, so that's good. Two emotes, the stream, and then is a mess. Oh, that, that's true. I forget people do that. You can have multiple emotes. Yeah, I was very frustrated playing Metal Storm. And I'm so pissed because I thought I saved those streams and I forget something happened. And I can't find the one where I'm at, like the final one where I keep dying. I Maybe I have it somewhere, but I think it's gone. Hold on. And then uh, Wolf Master says, I heard Castlevania Adventure who suffered through that travesty, Vance Velez did. <laughs> you have an emote of a seat. If you had an emote of someone's back, then one emote can say back seat. Hmm. I pictured, I think there's a part in a Rondo Blood in the intro screen where Richter's like looking over his shoulder like that, like maybe I could use that. <laughs> yeah, Castlevania Legends wasn't good. I remember being really excited. For some reason, it appealed to me at first, and then I quickly realized it sucked. Is it true that I like Metroidvanias now? Maybe. I think I do. I think I do, which is crazy. But yeah, there's um, one somebody, uh, somebody suggested to me, I wrote it down, it's on Switch and on Steam, and probably on everything, um, Ender Lilies, and I looked it up and it looked, um, it looked cool. Oh my god, TGR just said you should play Ender Lilies. Was that you? Did you suggest it? Either way, that's crazy. That's insane. Anyway, yeah, so Ender Lilies. <laughs> I kind of want to play that, but I'll probably... Um, I kind of want to replay Symphony of the Night since now I'm a little more familiar with how, you know, managing, like, equipping things and everything works. Because I, I, I haven't played a lot of RPGs because I'm weird. And um, I was really new to Metroidvanias, and I just got overwhelmed. And it was like a shit show getting through that game. So I'd like to play it again, and maybe I can actually, like, enjoy it. <laughs> Not that I didn't enjoy it the first time, but you know what I mean. Like, actually, like, it, I don't know. Be more relaxed playing it. So where were we? Best play control for Game Boys, Metroid 2 won. Second place, Battletoads. Third place, Belmont's Revenge. I remember it controlling okay. I mean, it's Game Boy. So it's like... Uh, I don't know. I can't really think of anything else that could be in the top three in this era. I don't know. I guess that's fine. Yeah, Ritual of the Night. Um, I played that a little bit, but yeah, I should. I would definitely want to play through that too. Um, keep losing my train of thought because now I'm thinking of like Metroidvanias. <laughs> Shit. Anyway. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can play, I can get back into Castlevania 64. I still have my N64 over there. I didn't put it away. It's just, if you're just getting in, I got more uh, cortisone shots for my carpal tunnel because it's been really bad and I really miss playing games and it will happen as soon as it can, hopefully. <laughs> anyway, Super Nintendo, best play control Super Mario World 1. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a no brainer. It had, it's great controls. Flawless. Second place, F-Zero. I agree. F-Zero also has great controls. Actraiser, third place. I never played much of Actraiser, but I know people fucking love it, so sure, that's fine. Okay, and then more play control. Let me take a sip of water. You're playing Ori in the Blind Forest. That game does look nice. I, I haven't seen any footage of it, but I've seen like screen casts. I'm like, oh, that's a pretty looking game. Is it fun? Like, is it actually enjoyable? 
I mean, I guess it is if you're saying it's breathtaking and beautiful, but you could just be talking about the aesthetics and the art. Anyway, uh, so for best multiplayer game, simul simultaneous, simultaneous, I can't say this word, why? Something happened to me in my brain a few years ago, I think. Simultaneous, simultaneous, fuck. Anyway, the winner is Battletoads. This is for NES. Second place, Tecmo Super Bowl. Third place on NES. Third place, F1 Race on Game Boy. Best overall villain. The winner is Bowser from Super Mario World. I agree. Third place, Dr. Wily from Dr. Wily's Revenge. Third place, Sardius from Super Ghouls and Ghosts. For the most innovative game, the winner is Final Fantasy II for Super Nintendo. It says an extremely innovative RPG, Final Fantasy II delivers throngs of character models of travel, locations, spells, weapons, and enemies. Have you ever traveled to the moon before? Second place is Pilot Wings. I mean, it's pretty innovative. Yeah, I agree with that. Third place, Smash TV. I like Smash TV. Smash TV on NES. Um, I played that um, in the arcade, the arcade version, a few months ago. That's really cool. Because you use like a trackball. It's really fun. When pe you know what? When people go, oh, what uh, arcade machine would you like to own? I would like Smash TV. <laughs> Alright, so for overall best games, the winner is Battletoads on NES. It says, absolutely no surprise here, Battletoads was by far the best NES game released in 1991. Sure, there were other great games released in 1981, but none could match the quality and sheer playing enjoyment that Battletoads provided. Congratulations are certainly in order for Rush Kabonzix. Second place, Tecmo Super Bowl. Third place, Ninja Gaiden 3. I like Ninja Gaiden 3. I'm glad Ninja Gaiden 3 is here. On this, you know, somewhere in the top three in various uh, categories. Don't you go to the moon in DuckTales? You do. These awards are terrible. Well, that's whatever kids voted back in the day. <laughs> you know? They were like, Battletoads, Battletoads, Battletoads! And then, overall best game, Game Boy. The winner is Metroid 2, Return of Samus. Samus proves that no matter what planet she travels to, the adventure will always be exciting. The need for a second adventure for Samus grew from just one life-sucking Metroid left over from the first adventure. Game Boy was lucky enough, lucky enough to play host this time. Second place, Dr. Wily's Revenge. Third place, Final Fantasy Adventure. For Super Nintendo, the winner is Super Mario World. No surprise there. Game's good. It's like, of course it won, you know? Mario ruled supreme in the Super NES overall category in 1991. It's no surprise. Every aspect of Super Mario World was fantastic. Mario's mission to rid Dinosaur World of Bowser and his minions was truly a delight to see and play. Let's not forget Yoshi! He played a big part in boosting Super Mario World to the top of the heap. I agree. Why is everyone saying Lisa needs braces? What? Was there a S Simpsons reference that I said on accident or something? <laughs> I'm confused what chat's ha what's happening in the chat. Hello, Slimzy McCrazy. What's up? Rescue Embassy Mission. That's an interesting game. Uh, I watched Mike play and I was like, oh. I just realized I didn't have the right thing up. Dental plan? What? I didn't say dental. I'm confused. I'm so confused. Anyway, uh, 
Super Jeff, the gamer, for subscribe. Thank you for subscribing for 44 whole months. Thank you. Welcome back. Oh, thanks so much. I hope you've been doing well, Jeff. Did you vote for anything in Nintendo Power? No. <laughs> I don't think I did. You think it's all rigged? Maybe it was. Are there any millennials who named their kids Samus? Probably somewhere, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, so second place for Super Nintendo is Final Fantasy II. Third place, ActRaiser. Cecil and his group make an impressive second place showing while ActRaiser follows up at third place. What does Nestor have to say? Not like you can see it. <laughs> I don't know why the editors won't let me vote on the games. The only thing they'll let me do is hand out the awards. Once again, the winners were obvious to me. I could have picked them in my sleep. Oh yeah, those statues don't look anything like me. Oh well, congratulations to the winners and thanks for voting. Seamus? I didn't say Seamus, I said Samus. Did I say Seamus? I can't, I don't know. You guys should know by now, I can't speak. And now we have the Mario comics. Would I name my kid Simon because of Simon Belmont? Hmm. Like, what if I went with Richter? Would that be bad to name your kid Richter? Nestor is a terrible host. I know, but he keeps getting invited back. It's always the awards are like named after him. And he's, he needs to get better at it. There's a lot writing on, you know, on his name and on him being better. Name your kid Juiced. Oh my god, can you imagine? How, how do you pronounce your name? Justy? Ju Juicy? Your name, your name is Juice? No, Juiced. Juice? Like a juice box? That would be that kid's entire life. Richter, you'd have to spell out to people. That's true. Eh, I don't know. Name him Alucard. I mean, that's a good answer. <laughs> Isn't one of Sabrina's aunts named Zelda? Yes. That is true. Helbiani says I named my kid Andros. Trevor. <laughs> Trevor is a solid name. Alright. It's do or die, says Princess Peach. Wow, she's flying around. Yeah, uh, Luigi says, how far is it around this moat? We'll take a break soon. Can it be? I don't believe my eyes. Friendly Floyd. Oh my god, this is so cute. He's like trying to sell lipstick to a piranha plant. This color is hot, hot, hot. And I have to, and I have makeup to match too. And the piranha plant's like. <laughs> uh maybe we can get a I feel like we've we've seen this guy before, I think of some of the other ones. Maybe we can get a refund for that Yoshi book. Oh yeah, they bought the Yoshi book, remember? Let's just scram before he can pull another scam. How about that break, bro? No, don't sit! Screech! So they just got hit with a cannon. I think a bullet bill is coming out. Boom! It must be- this must be the Koopa Express! Mario, wait for me! Woo! Hey, I'm pretty good at this, she says. Swish! For whoosh! I have no idea what's happening, but Princess Peach just jumped out of a castle? I guess to escape? I don't remember what's happening. <laughs> um, talk about a close encounter, she says. Uh... What? Okay, so all the Koopa kids are there. That bird looks sort of like the princess, says Luigi. It is the princess! Clear the 
runway. I'm coming in. Thud. Are you okay? And she's just like laying there with really long hair. Or no, 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 that's the parachute. I was like, when did her hair get that long? What? You let my bride escape? It's not our fault. She's much stronger than she looks. The Hulkster himself couldn't have stopped her. They would have been a lousy... She would have been a lousy mom anyway, Pop. Silence! Rumble smash. Mellow out, Dad. Okay, so we lost the princess, but we found someone better. You rotten Koopa brats. So they got Mario, so that's not good. Meanwhile, Yoshi and Luigi are checking on Princess Peach, who just went on the ground. She's out cold. What should I do? Says Luigi. Oh, Toad's there too. Look. What in the... Spoiling. <laughs> Greetings from the Koopa King. He is holding Mario. If you want him back, you must give us the princess. That's what they're saying. <laughs> if you fail to put her in this boat, your brother will pay. Poor Mario. That's blackmail. This is insane. All right. I don't like this guy. He creeps me out. What can we do? And now this guy's back. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Did you like the book? So I think in the last one we read, I think we did read the last one. They sold him like a Yoshi book, but it was like shitty. <laughs> so our new miracle makeup kit. Could this, could turn a frog into a prince? Do I look like I need a makeover? Come on, create a new you. New me? I need a miracle! Wait, a new me? I think I know what's gonna happen to Luigi. Er, could you excuse us? We'll be right back. Do not be long, Bowser is waiting. And now they're looking at that guy. And he grabs him and he says, Follow me, Floyd, and bring that kit. They're gonna make a disguise, I bet, with the makeup. How do I look? She's on her way. It worked. Creak. Floyd, you better come through this time to be continued. So I think they made over Princess Peach. I thought Luigi was... Oh, is it Luigi as Princess Peach? I think this is Luigi. So he dressed up like Princess Peach, maybe? I don't know. We'll have to find out next time. This is like story time in grade school, but with the video game comic. I know. I'm like, what am I doing? I don't know. I didn't want to skip it. I was like, I like the artwork in those Mario ones. I want to, I want to see what's happening. The uninvited. All right. So this is like a point and click game. I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know which one this is. Yeah. I don't know. I've never, it never appealed to me, but I know it's popular. You still have a laser disc? That's cool. Laser disc is nuts. Like I have the laser active, well Mike does. And that can play laser discs, but I haven't really used it to watch a movie before. But I just think they're cool. Uninvited stream when? I mean never say never, I don't know. Final Fantasy Legend 2. Where is the Seven Sword? Oh, look at th I don't like this art. I don't like this guy's nose. He kind of looks like the guy from Wacky Races. Dick Dastardly. Is that his name? He looks scary. He's like the Nintendo Power Hotline Helper, but he looks like a villain. Like, look at his eyes. He looks like he's, like, gonna fuck with this kid who's, like, asking a question, and he's like, I'm gonna tell him to go to the wrong the wrong way and he'll never finish the game ha 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 that's, that's what it looks like he's saying like he's gonna mess with them anyway 
That's funny that that's the artwork. You got too many CDs through Columbia House to start collecting vinyl now. Oh my god, I got... Oh, I did the Columbia House bullshit too. And then I remember, like, you know in the ads they had pictures of all the CDs? I remember cutting out the, the pictures of the CDs I like and making little collages on my, like, notebook. <laughs> Columbia House, man. But yeah, I bought a CD not that long ago. Because it's, um, like, you can't find it on Spotify. And I had, I had it growing up. This is really random. But in middle school, like, my friend's older sister introduced us to the Donnas. And we thought they were so cool. And the Donnas Turn 21 was the, the CD I had from them. And it's, like, out of print. You can't really find it. It used to be really expensive a few years ago, but now it's not that expensive. Like, a sealed one, but I... But I found it used at a record store for like two dollars, and I was like, fuck yeah. Because <laughs> it's not on Spotify or anything. So, your first CD was Green Day Dookie. That's, that's a good first one. My first CD was Tragic Kingdom from No Doubt. Oh, thank you so much. Thunderfist, 1978 for the raid. Thank you, I hope you had a good stream. We're listening to a mix from various uh, NES games. But yeah, I believe we did have a uh, um, a uh, Silver Surfer on for a second. I kind of tuned it out for a minute because I was like <laughs> thinking about whatever. Pure moods! Oh my god, pure moods! I need pure moods. I found one CD at a thrift store and I was like, I need to get the. Because it was like multiple CDs. I'm like, no, I should wait and get the set. <laughs> I should own that. That infomercial was on all the time. Maybe maybe that would calm me down. If I'm ever stressed out, I just need to put on pure moods. Chill the fuck out. Isn't that like Enya and other stuff? I need to buy that. I need to write that down. Or I'm sure somebody uploaded it to YouTube or something. Bye. I swear, if somebody like that didn't know me came in and looked at the notes I have scattered around, they'd be like, this person is fucking insane. I mean, they'd be right, but... Like, out of context, it's like, buy pure moods. Ender lilies. Da -da -da. They'd be like, I think there's a crazy person living here. This is fun. What music's this? Oh, it's the four games on the Quattro Adventure. So this could be from Dizzy the Egg or Super Robin Hood Speak of the Devil. I think it's from Dizzy because it sounds vaguely familiar, but I could be making it up. I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah, Work Boy, Work Boy's written down. <laughs> there are pure moods playlists on Spotify. Oh, thank God. Well, I know what I'm gonna do later. Do you think kids in 20 years will only play in VR? I, I have no idea. Will we still have consoles in 2040? I'm gonna guess no. I'm gonna guess it's only gonna be, uh, like, PCs and stuff. Maybe Nintendo will still make stuff. Like, there might be, like, handheld stuff, but I feel like they're on the way out. Like, X when I talk about, like, Playstations and Xboxes, I don't know. Who knows? Thank you for hanging out, TGR, and hello, Jose. Thank you, uh, Commander Anderson, for subscribing 21 whole months. Thank you. There are playlists for most time life co completions. Holy shit! Thank you, J Smooth. <laughs> I'm so glad you're telling me this. I'm gonna I'm gonna have fun exploring Spotify later. Future consoles will basically be PCs and TV boxes. I mean, maybe. But yeah, it'll probably, I don't know, who knows? But then like, you know, stuff comes back around and maybe people will be like, we miss consoles and then consoles will start coming back. All right. This is a beefy issue. Like, I forget how crazy it is. I'm like, oh, I might go, go through two or three magazines. We're not even, 
halfway done with the first one. I mean, we're chatting a lot, but this is a good issue. So Zardian, a legend of deep space. I want that to be my uh, Twitch bio. A futuristic battle, a doomsday robot. Well, this sounds awesome. All right, let's read the description at least. The Alpha One system has been invaded by computer aliens. Not just regular aliens, but computer aliens. Holy shit. Using these sophisticated robots. This is hard to read. The font is like very, um, it's blending with the background. You must unravel the webs of time, find Zardon, the ultimate deterrent, and end the war. Or maybe my bio should say the ultimate deterrent. I don't, I don't know. Asmic's space action game lets you switch between super bots, collect cool weapons, and save via battery pack. Good graphics and music hold your attention through four planets on the way to Zardion. That is a fucking epic uh, summary of the game. Sold me. I haven't even I haven't even looked at the screenshots of it yet, and I'm like, all right, I'm on board. I'm on board. <laughs> Hello, underwater fury. Aaron plays a legend of deep space. See, it doesn't have a ring to it, and then people will be like, what? And then they'll tune in, and they'll just be like, oh, this girl has squishmallows, and she only she plays Castlevania too much. Okay. I'm glad you like the Nintendo Power streams, Winter Burden. I don't know if we'll go through them all, but I mean, we don't have. Mike and I want to kind of complete it. But when it gets to later issues, we're like, eh, should we get them? But I think I, I don't know. We'll see how many we get. <laughs> Thank you. I am Demon84 for subscribing for 22 months. Thank you so much. Did I say underwater furry? <laughs> I'm sorry if I said that. I meant underwater fury. It's one of those days. There's no such thing as playing Castlevania too much. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Robots are us. Dude, this is like, this is one of the best written Nintendo articles. Seriously, this is a fucking solid issue. It's like out of control. The art's crazy. We have like, Killer Game Boys over here. There's the Nesters 91. This is like, I had no idea what I was getting into when I grabbed this one, so. I did, I did, I just picked it. I'm like, I'm not even gonna look. Let's just grab it. And then I grabbed the um, DuckTales one, because I'm like, oh, that'll go hand in hand with the Darkwing Duck cover. I know a streamer who has nothing but squishmallows behind her. <laughs> See, that's awesome. I'm trying I'm trying to stop with the squish. I don't have an insane amount, but I want the bats. I really want the Halloween bat. And then and then I'll chill. Until something else comes out that I want. But I'll chill with the squish. <laughs> Co-op stream with Mike when your wrists feel better. I really want to. Believe me. There's so many things I want to play. Underwater Fury must be a squishmallow or underwater furry. I'm afraid of what an underwater furry would be. Don't forget to hydrate. Good uh, call, Wolfmaster. I'm almost done with my water. I I drank a LaCroix really fast and I'm almost done with this. I'm hydrating like crazy because my throat is very irritated. I thought I was like good to talk, but I guess not. I don't want to know what an underwater furry is. <laughs> I'm confused now. Co-op Marmaduke stream? I mean, it's been a while since that Marmaduke stream. That was a good stream. It was like 4 a.m. People were confused. We were having a good time. Anyway, robots are us. Whoa. More skate or die. How come all the skate or die tracks sound like absolute shit? Thank you, Jason Jazz, for subscribing for 28 months. Thank you so much. 
I hope you've been well. Just play Astro, I could do some power pad stuff. I don't know if I could stream that though. I mean, there's room, but you wouldn't be able to see everything. Well, I can have multiple cameras, like one on my feet, so you can, like one on the pad, so you can see the pad, and then one on, I don't know. It could be done. The U-Force, I need to buy a U-Force. All right, buy Pure Moods, because we don't have a U-Force. And a U-Force. I'm gonna have fun on eBay tonight. And on Spotify. <sighs> Aw, hello, family. I'm so glad he likes the bubbles in my logo. Will there be shorts if it's a power pad stream? I don't know. It, it's very controversial when I bust out the shorts and the power pad. Maybe. I'll have to see if I'm feeling sassy or not. Holy shit, is this a profile of the different robots in the game? This is great. Warbots, you guys. Warbots. Warbots consist of exotic al alloys and supercomputers. But they are not invulnerable to attack. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses. Learn about all three robots by operating them. You'll collect experience points for destroying enemies, and those points will build up once the strength of your robots. Oh, will build up the strength of your robots. Once each bot has built up life reserves, use them like a tag team to get through tough stages. Alright, so they're explaining all these. There's Zardian, of course, the big boy right here. Then we have Triton. He looks pretty sick. Then we got Elkalides, or Elcides, Elkalides. I'm gonna say El- El- Elcides. El- I'm gonna say Elcides. Let's go with that. Elcides uses a powerful whip to strike down enemies. Ooh, he's like a Belmont robot. Well, we need to play this. Panthera. Panther robot. Type. Extra punch. Ocean Sphere. There's just so much going. This is over. Why is this overwhelming me? Has anybody played this? Does that suck? I feel like this could easily suck, but I'm just really intrigued by, like, how fucking hard they're selling this game. Even if it sucks, like, I kind of want to try it out. Because now I'm just, I'm intrigued. You know what? It's getting, it's getting a post-it note. Castlevania in space? Is it really? You can level up the robot. I own it, but I've never played it. Okay. It looks okay. Yeah, it's probably not great. I feel like it's probably not good. Or it's like forgettable. But I just, I don't know. I just want to, I want to try. I tried it recently, I think I need to read the manual, oh. It's probably confusing, because it's like, oh, you have to learn what three of these robots do, and you probably have to switch characters, I'm guessing, which, and sometimes that pisses me off. I don't like switching characters sometimes. So I might totally hate it. <laughs> robots overboard, uh-oh, there they go. Do you go on a cruise, and do they fall overboard? You don't want to get them wet. Anyway, Super Adventure Island. Whoa, look at that bird. It actually looks like fun. Okay. Free falling fun. I've never played the Super Nintendo Adventure Island game, I'm realizing. Some of these Adventure Island games are tough. There we go. So now you can kind of see it. According to the wiki, the designer of Gundam didn't mech design on this game. Mild shock. Okay, that's crazy. That's pretty cool. Then Colonel Rich Mustard says, kind of looks a bit like Metroid, only uglier. Okay. I agree, we need more robots in games. There's not enough robots in games anymore. What happened to the robots in games? 
Are kids not intrigued by robots anymore? Are those days gone? They might be. Hungry Gray loves Adventure Island? That's cool. I have nothing against it. I just haven't played it. Like the Super Nintendo one I haven't played. We need more Bone Daddies. I agree. The Bone Daddy merch is starting to come out. It's gonna be Halloween. There's skeletons everywhere. It's great. Oh, I had an idea for a stream. Um, so, um, I guess Dollar, I heard the Dollar Tree has, like, skeletons, like, that you could paint. And I'm like, we could paint a skeleton together on stream. And I don't think that would hurt my hands too much. And it would be fun. And then he could hang behind us for Halloween. Anyway, I think it's fun. So I might do that. If I can find it, I will do that. It's one of those things, like, you hear about, like, um, a store having a thing, and then you go look for it, and you can't find it. Like, it's not at your location or, location or whatever, so who knows. Skeletor. <laughs> they have Castlevania sweaters on the Konami merch site, and I want the one with the holy water. They're expensive, though. It'll be like the gingerbread house stream. That gingerbread house stream was cursed. So, I mean, it's it's time for another totally fucked DIY stream. <laughs> Alright, so we get a poster. What's the poster? What is the poster? Uh-oh. Holy moly. Krusty's Funhouse is a... Cr yep, Krusty's Funhouse. This is a cool poster. I really don't like this game. <laughs> but the poster's cool. So I'm gonna slowly... Oh! There's Sideshow Bob over there. I like all the mice. I don't know. I mean, I could put this up. I mean, I have a fucking Virtual Bart poster up, even though I don't like the game. It's like, the artwork's cool. I like the cover. I really like all the mice down there. I don't know. I think this is a cool poster. You have it on your wall? That's cool. I like this poster. This wasn't folded correctly. I'm trying to find the original scene. There we go. Wait, did I do it wrong? Oh no, I made it worse. This is all fucked. There we go. There we go. We fixed it. Everything's okay. I really like all the mice. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I like the mice. I think they're great. Did I just hear Mike dying in the background? Yes. And you're right. I do need a mic command. But okay. So I think it was Hex that said I need a command for like exclamation point Mike. What would the command do? Would it just explain what's happening when people are like concerned when they hear screams? What did this explain? Like, what's going on? It's not a bad idea, I'm just thinking about how to use it. Yes, that's my I mean, I guess that's what it would say, yeah. Uh, there you go. I mean, that's not a bad idea, it's a good idea. I should write that down too. Writing down a lot of shit tonight. I need more commands. There's other commands. I have them written down somewhere, other ones I want to add. I've just been uh, using all my computer mouse time for editing, trying to get a video out, because I'm going to be out of town in about a week, and I'm like, oh god, I gotta get this video out. Aaron has Mike chained up downstairs. Yes, that's what's happening. And Ernie and Elmo are torturing him. This is what happens. If you wrong me, you go to the chamber. I'm just kidding. Yeah, I like what New Wave says. Background screaming is a normal occurrence at Aaron and Mike's house of madness. That's good. That's everything you need to know. 
I should I should copy and paste that. I will. This stream, I'm sorry. I need to focus on the magazine, but it's just it's kind of just chatting. It's kind of I don't know. It's everything. It's one of those. Oh God, Treasure Master. Ugh. Okay. There's a magazine. I'm not gonna ignore Contra 3. We're gonna get to Contra 3. We're getting there right now. Right now. Alright, so Contra 3, the Alien Wars. There you go. Look at that badass artwork. So that's good. Alright, it says, <laughs> there's a lot going on right now, the alien wars begin, it's time for revenge, Red Falcon is back with hordes of new and improved alien enemies, is that music too loud? It feels very, it's like distracting, but if you don't think it's too loud, I'll keep it. This is from Trojan. I don't know anything about Trojan on NES, but that's the game it's from. Okay, it's not too loud, alright. If this is the Alien Wars, what the hell was happening in the other Contra games? Those were like, the alien fights. It wasn't a full-on war yet, you know? Okay. Thank you, Hex. Okay, so it says, let's start over. The alien wars begin. It's time for revenge. Red Falcon is back with hordes of new and improved alien enemies. Konami scores big with the first Super NES Contra game. Contra 3 features horizontal and vertical scrolling stages and also shows off a few dazzling overhead views. It's an awesome two player game and each of the six stages will test your game playing skills. I've never tried this two-player, but I imagine it's absolute hell. Like, that would be tough. Get a grip. So it's saying you can, you know, you can grip the ceiling, and it's like, get a grip. Man, it must have been so fun writing for Nintendo Power. I would have had a good time if I was a writer for Nintendo Power back in the day. Like, if I could time travel, because I was like, three, four when this was published. If I was like my age now, I'd have a good time. I, especially with the headlines. I'd be like, can I just write the headlines with like puns and just awful like stupid shit? It'd be so much fun. All right, so it's like, it's showing, you know, the, like a layout of the levels in Neo City. The old cyber steel factory, you don't want to end up there. See, that's what this, see my room? This is what it's above. It's above the old cyber steel factory. And that's why there's so many screams and noises. Because there's a lot of problems going on. Wait, the old cyber steel factory? Yeah, not the new one that they built. This is the old one. You don't want to go there. I like this picture. Look at his face, he's like, oh! I mean, I'd be very shocked too if I saw a giant brain with an eyeball coming out of the sky. And now it's on a super soccer. Super soccer champ. I'm a super soccer champ. Super soccer showdown. Sock and boppers. I don't know what to say about this. It's soccer. Remember soccer boppers? Sock and boppers? I don't know. I'm sure it's fine. I don't hate sports games, like, especially retro ones. Like, there's a lot of NES sports games that I enjoy. I like, 
hockey on NES. I like uh, Super Spike V-Ball. I like, um, I'm blanking. What else do I like? I don't know. There's some I like. <laughs> I don't know. Wii Sports. I mean, I guess that counts. I mean, Wii Sports is fantastic. Skate or die. God damn it, New Wave. <laughs> They'd be happy. People would be like, oh, she likes skate or die now. Thank God. I don't hate her anymore. California games. I don't to California games is by any means not, it's not a good game. But for some reason, I just, I don't know. It's, it's, I find it a cute idea. I like the vibe. But it's not good, but I like it. You know what I mean? It's one of those. You liked NBA Jam? It was your jam? I had um, NBA Give and Go on Super Nintendo. I got it at a game store used as a kid. It was during my phase where I tried to get into basketball because I was very tall as a kid. Everyone's like, you should play basketball, you should play basketball. And that didn't last too long, but um, I had that game. <laughs> Thank you, John3275, for subscribing for seven months. Thank you so much. Yeah, the Tiny Toon Olympics game. I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Hello, person624. Good to see you. How tall am I? I'm 5'6", so I'm normal. But growing up... Not normal, you know what I mean, like average... Growing up, I was very tall for my age. I was in, in elementary school. I was always the tallest kid in class, always, and it gave me a complex. <laughs> and then, I, and then, I'm, like around sixth, seventh grade, I just stopped growing. Hello, Nico Fiore. I was just like a tall, awkward kid, like. <laughs> just like towering over all the other kids in my class I don't know what happened and then my doctor was like I remember being a kid and the doctor going you're gonna be you're gonna be like 5'10 like you're gonna be really tall and like making jokes like you should be you should get into modeling or basketball ha 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 but nope I stopped at 5'6 <laughs> Street hoops for Neo Geo. I don't think I, I don't think I played that one. That's cool though. Maybe you willed yourself to stop growing taller. I don't know. Something happened, or it was just one of those things. I grew really fast and then I just stopped. I don't know. going okay that's why I was like why are you talking about sculptured software that's because sculptured software is on the screen right now and you're saying they did the Super Star Wars games oh that's cool I played a little bit of um was it the first Super Star Wars game or no, no, no I did a Empire Strikes Back I played a little bit of and I got further than I thought I would. And then I was really impressed because then I realized I was playing on like, I forget what the names are. You know, there's like Jedi and all that. I was playing on um, like hard. And I was like, oh, I, like I didn't get far, but I made it slightly further than I thought I could. And I was like, oh shit, okay. It was like a good self-esteem moment for me. <laughs> Is that the incredible machine on the page? Um. I don't know what that means, but anyway, so in this picture, <laughs> I'm like gone mentally. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, so it says Craig Cosmo Condor. I wish, that's a cool nickname, Cosmo. 
worked in his programming magic on the Super NES version of Jack Nicholas Golf, published by Trade West. So that's him programming a game. So that's cool. There's like pictures of how they did that. <laughs> On the court action. Roger Clemens MVP baseball. I'm trying to hold this so you can see correctly. So they dreamed up a new adventure for Bart Simpson that explores the boundaries of the Simpsons universe. Oh shit. This is funny. Okay. The Simpsons Bart's Nightmare will be Sculptured Software's first take on everyone's favorite cartoon family. One of our goals is to make a game that has the same look and feel as The Simpsons Show by really concentrating on retaining the personalities of the characters. George notes. We see appearances by Homer Kong battling Bartzilla and Momthra. At one point in the game, Bart gets sucked into TV land to meet up with Itchy and Scratchy, and later he flies over Springfield as Batman. Bartman, I'm sorry. None of, none of the past Bart Simpson games have looked anything like this one. And boy, was that game a doozy. In the future, let's see what else they say. This is interesting. I like articles like this. In the future, George Meadows and Sculptured Software will continue to attempt to break new ground and come up with intriguing game designs. George has this advice to those who aspire to do the same. Play all of the games that you want, just stay in school and learn something valuable, like programming, animation, or electronic music. The industry needs a constant flow of creativity. What good advice. Uh-oh. Super scope. There was a mobile Simpsons arcade game? I don't remember that. Recently got a super scope. That's cool. Um, yeah, I want to do. I was gonna do a super scope stream, but I'm like, I don't know. I feel like this would bother me. So I found a way to play super scope games with a tablet control. I mean, then you're emulating it, but it's like, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so this says. So this is Rob and George, and they're gonna tell us about the super scope, I guess. Okay, you, it says, you, come to Nintendo headquarters and be a Nintendo Power editor for a day. You, play the latest games, then take aim at George and Rob, give them your opinions. Wow. <laughs> okay, I want you guys to see, there we go. So, I guess I just need to make this closer to the camera. Is that all I needed to do? Hold on. Oh, God. I don't have anything to prop it up on. You know what? We're whatever. Anyway, we'll figure this out. Thank you for being here for this test run <laughs> of the new magazine setup. I'm learning. Anyway, uh, in the future issue, now playing will feature three guys or two guys and a gal. Your remark, your remarks will be printed along with George's and Rob's. That's cool. Okay, second prize. Ten winners get a Super Scope 6. The Super Scope 6 set includes the scope and six hot games in a single multi-pack. Then the third prize is 50 winners. I want that shirt. They'll be scoping you out when you wear your power jersey. That just looks like a shirt with Nestor on it, though. I want a power jersey. Oh my god, there's more. Oh, it's just rules. Oh my god, wait, 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 wait. So this is more of like the grand prize. 
It says you pick up your own Super NES and Super NES Super Scope 6. Oh, sorry. You have a Nintendo Power lunch at Cafe Mario. I want to see pictures of Cafe Mario. And you scope out the sites in Seattle. Because that's where the headquarters was, I guess. That's insane. And then we got Nestor's Adventure. Adventures. So it always ends with the Nestor comic. Oh, that's awesome, Tez209. Thank you. How about an Aaron Power jersey? I, <laughs> I should make a power. I don't even know what, what even is that. I guess it's a jersey that's like really cool and awesome. Okay, what's over here? Power players. Okay, yeah, so these are all the people that have uh, beaten uh, games. And then you submit your proof with a picture. Or, or your high score. Oh my god, there's people who finished the Flintstones. Castlevania 4, Darius Twin, Act Razor, Bart vs. the World, Star Wars, Super Girls and Ghosts, Super Mario Land, Super Mario World, Ultraman, UN Squadron, uh, Metroid 2, Final Fantasy. So that's cool, they print your name in there. Oh, look at- oh my god. There's some crazy artwork. It's all over the place. This, like, I don't know, whatever. So, May 92, now playing. They're playing their Game Boys with their Link. Two guys' opi two guys' opinions on the latest releases. So this is what they're gonna say about Darkwing Duck. Let's see what George says. George says, we've mainly got Super NES games to talk about this month. For the NES, though, I can say that Darkwing Duck is a real winner. It's got a great character and that same cartoon-like style that has made the Mega Man series so fun to play. And then, um, Rob is like, yeah, it's good. Yeah, so they like they like Darkwing Duck. And maybe they had to because it's the cover game. But I think they like it. I don't think anyone really considers it a bad game. Alright, um... And now they're talking about... <laughs> George says there's a new game pack from Interplay that is soon to be released called the 4-in-1 Fun Pack. It includes chess, checkers, backgammon, and reversey. <laughs> They're like really trying to sell this game. Uh, Rob says, yeah, this is a really great idea. You've got four classic board games and one game pack. I see this as a good traveling pack. So they go on to talk about this for a while. It's a back and forth about this game pack. The four in one interplay. Oh, there's a new action puzzle game. For a Game Boy called Nail and Scale. From the title, I thought this was going to be a beauty parlor game. You know, where you go in and get your nails done, then hop onto the scale. <laughs> I think the only place I found a beauty parlor is an upcoming Barbie game for Game Boy. So hint, that game is involved in my next video. <laughs> it's a doozy. Uh, yeah, so they're talking about how it's, like, fine. What else did they talk about? They talk about Contra 3. I'm sure they like it. Let's see. The enemies are great, and some of the items that you can use are also pretty awesome. In one place, for example, you can climb into a tank and fire this amazing shot that makes the whole tank recoil. Contra 3 is going to be a mega hit. I think they're correct. Let's see, what else? They talk about Super Soccer, they talk about some golf games. You just bought my coffee mug. Did you really, K-Train? If you did, thank you very much. That's really cool that you did that. If not, that's fine too. Thanks for being in the stream. Alright, 
So more of the golf stuff. And then they have a disclaimer here. The opinions of Rob and George do not reflect the opinions of Nintendo Power Magazine or Nintendo of America, Inc. Always gotta put that disclaimer. Latest releases. And they grade them. Yep, there are coffee mugs. There's a link, uh, on my Twitch. <laughs> um, okay, so your guide to the latest releases. Darkwing Duck got a 3.9 pretty much across the board. For So all of the things you can rate are graphics and sound, play control, challenge, theme, and fun. So it's did pretty solid. Matchbox Racers is kind of, there's 2.9, 3.3, it's kind of eh. Robocop 3, 3.3, 2.9, 3.0. Wacky Races, it's got solid 3.3, 3.5, 3.3, 3.4. get a four point, like what's the highest you can get? One to five, okay. Did anything get like a four or a five? I don't think so. Oh, down here though, when we get to Super Nintendo. Alien Wars got a lot of 4.4s. Uh, Jack Nicholas Golf got some 3.3s. Raiden Trad got pretty low scores. PJ Tour Golf kind of eh. Super Adventure Island got pretty high scores like 3.7, 3.6, 3.8. Super Soccer did pretty good. Zardian did pretty good with 3.3. All right. So the clunker here was Raiden Trad from Electrobrain. It's described as military action. I don't know Raiden Trad. But I think they mentioned it over here. Um, oh, here. So it's like a top down thing. I don't know. Oh, you like it? I'm like, it doesn't look bad. I don't know. I would try it. It's a two player. Okay, this is what they say it is. So, here. It's a two player simultaneous shooter where you pilot a plane that looks something like an F 14. Okay. A two player team up is much easier than a one player game. Both planes are able to earn power ups very quickly, including these homing missiles with the zero in on anything in your path. I mean, it looks fun. It's like a shmup. I would try it. I mean, it looks, from what I'm looking at now, it looks like a shmup. It is a shmup? Okay. I would. They're really hard and trolly. Oh my god, it's a miracle new wave. <laughs> but yeah, I probably, I don't know, I probably like it. Mike said in his stream that he needs a coffee. Can you go make him a cup? Well, normally I would, but see, I'm currently streaming. So he's going to have to make it himself. I make it the best, though. So he's going to have to settle with a Mike coffee. I think Aaron coffee's a little better. And then K-Train again. He wants me to put salt in Mike's coffee. I'm not going to do that. That is mean. Or Elmo has to make it. You don't want uh, Elmo handling your drinks or your food. You, you, you just, you never know. Sometimes it could be fine. Totally fine. But I've seen him do some things where it's just, I don't want Elmo handling my food. Or any of my items, really, when I think about it. Okay. So the early rating games are kind of trolly, but the newer ones aren't so much. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Have I ever worked as a barista? No. That would be, um, like when you go to Starbucks and it's busy, like, that's hard. You have to memorize how to make all those drinks and it's, I, I don't know. I think I would, I won't think I would do well at that. I don't know how to make anything fancy, but... Just normal <laughs> coffee drinks. 
Anyway. Oh, what's this? I feel like my awkward segues. Anyway. Top 20 for May 1992. So I'll read like the top five-ish. I'll like mention some. I can't read all these because I can tell my voice is going away. Number one. For the, so these are the NES top, top 20. Number one, Super Mario 3. Number two, Legend of Zelda. Number three, Battletoads. Number four, Mega Man 4. Number five, Final Fantasy. And then also in the top 20, you got Tecmo Super Bowl, Metroid, Dr. Mario, Mario 2, Stylus, Batman, Monopoly, Tiny 2 Adventures, Castlevania 3, Zelda 2, and Ninja Gaiden 2. I just wrote a few. I didn't read all. All right. <clears throat> Super Nintendo. Let's see. Number one, Super Mario World. Number two, F-Zero. Number three, Legend of Zelda. Number four, Final Fantasy II. Number five, SimCity. And we got Castlevania IV. Almost made the top five. Uh, Actors are Pilot Wing, Super Ghost of Ghost, Contra 3. I, th I thought Contra 3 would be higher up there. That's kind of surprising. Home Alone is in the top 20. Oof. Super Tennis, Super R-Type, oh good. Wanderers from Ease. Okay, an Ease game. I was like, what's that? I assume it's part of the Ease series. E why? I, 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 ugh. Ease, Ease, Ease. I always have trouble saying that. I always get like, uh, like, I'm like, wait, am I saying it wrong? Anyway, oh, it's Ease 3. I'm not that familiar. I think on stream I started playing the Famicom one that was like translated a little bit and I was like, oh, this is kind of fun. Do any of you remember that in a variety stream? I think I was doing Famicom games and I played a little bit of the, uh, um, of the translated one. I'm like, oh, maybe I should do this. We don't mention Michael Buble, New Wave. You guys are trolling me. See, I gotta be careful with what I tell you guys I don't like. And then and then it comes back to haunt me. <laughs> Why the hell is Home Alone on that list? It's because it was a very popular movie and kids got tricked. And some kids were like, oh, this is awesome. Cause it's like, I don't know. Back then you only had a few games. Well, most kids. And you just were like, everything's awesome. You know? Like, I, I mean, I don't know. I remember, like, I would rent a game or whatever, and I'd be like, eh, this isn't, like, I wouldn't really like it, but at the time, I wasn't really thinking of, like, bad or good. I mean, not good, but, like, I wasn't really considering, oh, this is a bad game. I just assumed I wasn't understanding something. Like, I just, I would assume the problem was with me as a kid, renting games. Like, renting, like, Rocco's Modern Life or, like, Auro Monsters. I was like, oh. The problem has to be me. I must not understand something. And then I would rent it again and be like, no, I still don't understand it. <laughs> Just like how your friends told you with Lords of Shadow. Yes, Wolfmaster's favorite Castlevania game. Rip Funko Land. Yes, R.I.P. You rented Blues Brothers for Super Nintendo. <laughs> My friend and I would rent uni racers all the time from a local store. We didn't know it was super rare. I didn't know uni racers was rare. <laughs> That's funny. Um, oh yeah, now we got Game Boy. So the top 20 for Game Boy, we got Super Mario Land, Metroid 2, Dr. Mario, Battletoads, Dr. Wily's Revenge, Final Fantasy Adventure, Castlevania 2, uh, TMNT, Fall of Foot Clan. I did a video on that. It's a fun game. TMNT, Back from the Sewers. From what I remember from that one, it's like more of the same. Isn't that just like another side-scrolling like Turtles game for Game Boy? Um, which is fine. Like they're just fun. Like. As a kid, I would enjoy a game like that. Like, uh, Fall of Foot Clan, if I had that as a kid, I'd probably go, oh, this is fun. 
Um, like, it doesn't, everything doesn't have to be, like, some super epic great thing to be enjoyable, you know what I mean? Uh, let's see, Simpsons Escape from Camp Deadly. That one, I want to not say is bad, but I feel like it, it sucks, but I want to keep trying it. I want to try it again, you know? Because I feel like some of you guys actually like it. Isn't there somebody that likes Escape from Camp Deadly? Or is it supposed to be the one that's, like, the most playable? It sucks as Nintendo fan. I feel like it pro- I don't know. Um, they're not- gr my hands aren't great, Stefan, but thanks for asking. That's why I'm doing magazine streams. Bart versus the Juggernauts. What's- that's not ringing a bell. What's that on? Is that on Game Boy also? Unit Racers got sued by Pixar and had to stop selling it. Really? I feel like I own that game. Huh. I feel like I own it. I mean, maybe it's a repro. I, I feel like I own it, though. Oh, Bart vs. Juggernauts is a bunch of mini games. Okay, I haven't played that one. And now we got a banger track playing, finally. Home Alone, again, Home Alone on Game Boy, holy shit. Adam's Family. Home Alone was like rake, raking in the cash back then, damn. Uh, yeah, this is actually the Nintendo Power of Darkwing Duck. Right here. That's the one we're looking at. Um, you should give Snake Revenge on NES a try. Okay, that's not ringing a bell, but I will look that up later if I remember. Alright, player's picks. What are your favorite Super NES action adventure games? Brandon from Fort Worth, Texas. He likes Pilot Wings, SimCity, Mario World. Gradius 3 and Darius Twin. Good choices. Darcy from Locks, Connecticut likes Final Fight, F-Zero, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Super Mario World, and Super RSA. These kids have good taste. When I was that young, I was just going for the license stuff. Like, besides the Mario stuff, I was like, I want the Lion King and Aladdin. Okay, Brian from Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin likes Link to the Past, Castlevania 4, Super Baseball Simulator 1000, F-Zero, and Super Tennis. I'm going through all these. It's fun. Sean from... I like reading the name and where they're from. I feel like I'm on, like... Like I'm on the radio. Sean from Carbondale, Illinois likes Super Mario World, UN Squadron, SimCity, Super Goals and Ghosts, the Legend of Zelda, the Link to the Past. Derek from Apopka, Florida likes Act Razor, Final Fantasy II, Final Fight, Link to the Past, and SimCity. While Aaron from Glendale, Arizona likes Mario World, F-Zero, John Madden's Football, Castlevania 4, and Super R-Type. What's Take 5? Can we get interviews with all these people? <laughs> Which one of those kids has a retro game YouTube channel now? They're all in their 40s. Yeah, wouldn't that be interesting if anybody that was in this is on um, YouTube? So take five. The readers of Nintendo Power have voted these games to be their top five Super Nintendo action adventure games. Okay, so it's pretty much everything that was already mentioned. It's Mario World, Link to the Past, Final Fight, Castlevania 4, and Act Razor. Holy shit! Melissa Joan Hart? Finally a celebrity player profile of somebody that I know? Like, know of? Because it's always these, like, random people from random shows where I'm like, I don't know who they are. We got Clarissa. This is Melissa Joan Hart, peak Clarissa. What was she playing? I am so happy. 
Yeah. Okay, so, you know, they ask about, like, blah, blah. Um. Okay. Oh, this is funny, because also later, there's, there's a picture of Melissa Joan Hart at a GameCube launch party, and she's playing the- I think it's GameCube, right? So, she's been involved with Nintendo. <laughs> okay, so they sent them some games. So she says, I played Lemmings. It was great. I like the challenge. It's really cool how you have to figure out what Lemming you need and put it in the right place. It's kind of hard to tell the different ones apart from their pictures on the screen, though. They were too small. It didn't take long to figure out the blasters, but some of the others looked too much alike. Okay, so there's another guy. Who's the other guy? Oh my god, it's Ferguson. They also interviewed Jason Zimbler, who plays Ferguson. Thank you so much, Lupe Belmont, for subscribing for eight months. Thank you. So what, let's see what Ferg, what Ferg Breath was like playing. Damn it! And for anybody who forgot who he is, there's a picture. They were so young. This is like early Clarissa. So he was playing uh, WWF Super WrestleMania. The graphics were fabulous. I liked running and bouncing off the ropes, and the move where you run and jump kick. I didn't play long enough to figure out what the X button does, though. And then Nintendo Power is like, have you ever called a Nintendo game counselor when you've been stuck in a game? And then he says, no, I just asked my friends. We trade tips and stuff all the time. Then they go, how about you, Melissa? And she's like, no, when I'm stuck, I ask my sister and brother. They know everything. Uh... It says, your character, Clarissa, creates great video games in the show. If you could create a game, what would it be about? She's like, I don't know. The lead would definitely be a girl, and the boys would be enemies. Maybe I'd put Jason's face on a spider or something. Just kidding, Jason. Ha 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 ha. And then he says, how about you? Well, they asked Jason, he, who's Ferguson. I like games like Act Razor, ones that make you think. I'd make it look very realistic, and it wouldn't just be a shoot 'em up. It'd be a quest, not an action game. You'd have to think and find out what to do next. This is funny. This is so funny. Have a good night, uh, Sergio. No, I don't, Stefan. <laughs> not at all. She was also the tutorial guide in Nickelodeon Director's Lab, which I played a lot. Nickelodeon Director's Lab. I'll have to look that up. I want to know what that is. Oh, that that's cool, Games and Movies. <laughs> Alright, so, oh, I like this section where they talk about what games are coming up because sometimes there's games in here that have never been released. Alright, so, Pack Watch. Acclaim has Krusty's Funhouse, which is the poster in this issue. So they're talking about that. Um, Bart's Nightmare, oh my god. It's a lot to unpack here. Ferrari Grand Prix, I don't know. Uh, Lemmings. And Dragon Strike. So, Clarissa was sent some uh, games before they came out. She was playing Lemmings. She got the hookups. Track and Field. Oh no. For the Game Boy. NBA 2 for the Game Boy from LJN. And then in Japan, what's going on in Japan? Um, in Japan, there is sort of a tradition that when a new game in the Dragon Quest series, Dragon Warrior in the United States, is released, released during the winter, few other games are released in direct competition. Companies plan on releasing games after the Dragon Quest frenzy subsides. So imagine the mayhem when Enix suddenly delayed the release of Dragon Quest V last February. 
No one knew when it would be safe to release their spring games. One game that braved the uncertain market was Romancing Saga, a role-playing adventure in the tradition of Final Fantasy II from Square. The game for the Super Famicom has great replay potential due to an ever-changing storyline. Alright. Uh-oh, gossip galore. What are they gossiping about? Okay, so they're saying there's gonna be Super Faceball, Battle Toads, and Battle Maniacs, and Where's Waldo? And let's see what else. Pack Watch has learned the NES and Game Boy versions of George Foreman's boxing game are planned. We also hear rumblings about Spider Man 2 for Game Boy. I know there's a Spider Man game for Game Boy, but I don't know about Spider Man 2. I don't remember. Uh, let's see what else. Um, where's Waldo? Yeah, well that came out, we all know. So that's about it. And then here's some more future games. This is the fun part, okay. Because these are kind of uncertain. Let's see. Bioforce Ape. Not ringing a bell. Did that come out? Capcom's Gold Medal Challenge, 92. Contra Force, okay. Dragon Strike, Ferrari Grand Prix Challenge, Dragon's Quest, Krusty's Funhouse Lemmings, Might and Magic, and Rocky. Nope, it didn't come out. At least not in North America. Bioforce Ape is out. There's a prototype. Okay. So it wasn't like officially ever released. Okay, so for Super Nintendo, Bart's Nightmare, The Dual Test Drive 2, F1 ROC, Rock, I don't know, Krusty's Funhouse. Is there a Krusty's Funhouse on Super Nintendo? I can only picture it on NES. Um, Magic Sword, Out of This World, The Rocketeer, Street Fighter 2, Super Battle Tank, Super Faceball, Super Play Action, Football, TMNT 4, True Golf Classics, Pebble Beach, Ultra Bots, Sanction Earth, and Wings 2. Oh, it's Krusty's Funhouse is on uh, Super Nintendo? Oh, okay. And then for Game Boy, Ariel the Little Mermaid, Lunar Chase, MC Kids. Mick Kids, NBA 2, and Track and Field. Street Fighter came out 35 years ago today. Wow. Wow. 35 years. That's crazy. So in the next issue, they're going to talk about Lemmings, Dragon Strike, Star Wars on uh, Game Boy, and Arcana. Oh, Super Scope Mall Tour. <gasps> I want to go to the Super Scope Mall Tour. Let me try to make it so you can see. Super Scope, Super Power 92. The Super Scope Mall Tour. So it's going to Atlanta, Boston, Dallas, Philadelphia. It's like always those places. San Francisco, DC, Baltimore, Seattle, Cleveland. All right, so it's going around. Did anybody go to any of those events? That's crazy. And then the back. They usually have this on the back sometimes. Keep your game in high gear. I want that van. Isn't that a good looking van? Alright guys, so that was a look. I'm sorry it was a little blurry look at Nintendo Power. Issue 36 featuring Darkwing Duck. That was a really good issue. This is this was fun. And again, I'm sorry it's a little out of focus. I'm trying to get this uh, magazine set up together so I don't have to move cameras as much and I can switch between gameplay and magazines more often. Anyway, I missed you guys. This was really fun chatting. It was really fun going through this. 
Hopefully I'll be back sooner than later. Alright guys, bye, have a good night.